Hi, welcome to a Simplified and Fabulous Mom Life podcast. I'm Jennifer McDaniel, pro organizer, capsule wardrobe stylist, and functional home designer. As a mom of four, I realize how quickly things get out of control and how important it is to prioritize how your home functions and how it makes you feel. So if you're ready to find solutions to the stressors in your home and make room for the things that are really important, listen in and let's get started. Hey friends, we're doing a little second part of the kitchen organization today. We are going to talk about how many you should have. How, I get that question all the time. Well, how do I know how many pots to keep? How do I know how many Tupperware or plastic containers or Pyrex dishes to keep? How many you know of each category should we keep? And the answer is, however many, it, it, it is 100% depending on you, your family, the way you all use your kitchen and those items, it, it varies. There's no set number, but my, there is a set way to think about it. If you are going to have, how long would you keep leftovers? So your Pyrex containers or your storage containers, you're probably not going to use that. You know, most people don't keep leftovers more than a week. A lot of people more than three days. So for storage of those items, keep in mind how many you're going to use at the same time. Okay. So if you're going to have a week's worth of storage containers in the refrigerator, how many are you going to use in a week? How many are going to be in your, in your, you know, stored at the same time? How many dishes are you going to use before you run the dishwasher? Like you don't need six sets of plates if you run the dishwasher every day and you only have five people in your house. Like you don't need six sets of plates. You need maybe 10 plates, maybe, maybe 20, depending on how often you host. I have a ton of plates because I host often and I have a really big family. So when I host, sometimes there's nearly 40 people there and we have multiple meals a day. So I do have several sets of plates. So if that's how your life is, go ahead and keep however many you're going to use. And I do host multiple times a year. So I do have a lot of plates, but if your family doesn't use a lot of plates, there's no need to have an entire cabinet full of plates. Like what are you going to use in a day? What's the max number you're going to use in a day? And don't keep more than that. Like if you haven't used those plates and 20 years why do you still have them like just think through the why of why do you still have those plates if you've never used them if they're special your your wedding china whatever plan there people gave those to you for you to enjoy the intention of those dishes were to be used they were not made to hang on the wall. They are not intended for decoration, although they are beautiful decorations. And I do love doing that in the houses. Sometimes my grandmother has always had her plates on the wall, but we also use them. We used her beautiful plates. We didn't just use her everyday stuff that was ugly and chippy. And you know, you you could, you're fine to put that on the floor for the dogs too. We use the nice stuff and we hand wash stuff occasionally, like uh, the, the nice stuff. We would hand wash the silver. We would hand wash the, the China, but we use it. It's not supposed to just be in the, the China cabinet. It's supposed to be used for special occasions. Find a special occasion. <laughs> use it. Who cares if it's for pizza? Enjoy that plate for a minute, you know, like have fun. If it gets broken, it gets broken, but you have a memory. Okay. Don't just keep it in a box. If you're keeping sentimental stuff in a box, how special is it? It doesn't feel very special tucked away in a box. Show it off. Put it somewhere special. Use it. I keep some of my, I keep, I have my jewelry in a crystal container, like a candy dish or whatever on my dresser in the closet because it's pretty. It makes me happy. It makes me smile. I use it. My, you know, I had a second container, um, that my brother got for me ages ago. I was a kid before I got married. I've been married over almost 20 years. So it's been a long time. I've had it for a while. And one of my kids knocked one of my wooden hangers down and it shattered the lid. So, you know, but you know what? I enjoyed it for a long time. I enjoyed that little butterfly shaped glass container for a really long time. It's fine. I'm not mad about it because 
I used it. I enjoyed it. How disappointing is it to have something that you've never used stored in a box and then it breaks and you never even got a chance to use it. So just put it out and use it. And if it breaks, it breaks. Live your life. Enjoy things. Enjoy the pretty things, please, people. (laughs) So the point of this episode is to let you know when you are in your kitchen and you're trying to decide how many of each item do you keep, how many are you going to use in a day? Are you going to use 15 serving spoons or 15 spatulas? Or are they going to get stuck in the drawer? Do you have um, like a butter slicer or some random gadget that you haven't used and you've had it for years and you still haven't used it? And it gets stuck at the back of the drawer and tangled up in the handles of things and just is really inconvenient and ignored. Do you need it? Look in your drawer. If your drawer is crowded, look in there and find a couple of things you can do without. If your cabinet is crowded, find a couple of things you don't need. And give them to somebody else, like donate them to someone who can actually use them. Find somebody that can appreciate it and enjoy its value. Donate them to moms who are coming out of an abusive relationship. The women's shelter, there's a lot of different organizations that work and work to help these families that are coming, you know, out of awful situations or have lost everything to help them to find all the specifics that they need and set up their new home. And that's an awesome way to donate. Um, I love, I love finding people that are really needing it and not just getting rid of it. But if I need it out fast, (laughs) post it as a free pickup on marketplace or a local selling site. There's somebody to choose from (laughs) and just get it out of there. Like every time I post stuff for free, it's gone within 48 hours, gone. And most of the time, within 12 hours, it's gone. So just be be mindful of how many you have of each item. If you're not going to use that many items in a week, in a month, or ever at the same time, pare it down. If you're feeling overwhelmed, make room for the other things that are on the counter. You know, if you clear out that you know, extra stack of plates and bowls, you have room to put one of those appliances that's just sitting there on the counter so you can just pull it down when you need it and it doesn't take up all that space and then you have more workspace. I had one client that um, moved her microwave into a lower cabinet that was awkward to get to so she could actually use the right side of her kitchen instead of having the microwave on the counter and it saved so much space. She had, I'll try and send a picture set up a picture of it in the um, Facebook group, but we had (laughs) on her counter, she had three or four different appliances and she only had maybe a total of 10 feet of countertop in the whole kitchen. And she had to have an entire microwave on there, but they didn't use it often. Like they used it maybe once or twice a week. And I mean, maybe like that was not something they used regularly. It didn't need to be out taking up the bulk of the counter space. So Think outside the box. Figure out if those cabinets have things that you can, that you even need in them. The cabinet that we ended up putting the microwave in had um, like travel drink cups and maybe like two old lunch boxes and something else random. Maybe like mixing bowls or something that just really, they were fine to be used somewhere else and they fit in a different space. Even in this small kitchen, it fit, fit somewhere else super easy and it made a lot of sense wherever it was. And that cleared up all the space so the microwave fit under there. And then they just used an extension cord and left the door open when they were using it, which was very infrequent. Um, if you're planning on using a microwave for a really long time, I recommend not putting it in the cabinet. But they, you know, they didn't use it very often. So it worked great. But the things that you're not using often, keep them off the countertops and get rid of anything that you're not using. Anything that you just don't use or that's just taking up space or that you have duplicates of, if you replaced it because it was, you know, maybe you have a a spatula like the scoop out the the mixing bowl with and the, the, the top of it falls off easily or it's really hard to get clean or it's, you know, whatever, get rid of it. There's other stuff that's so much easier. Don't, don't deal with stuff that's frustrating like that. <laughs> I had this vintage can opener looking thing. Probably came from the dollar store. I don't know. I was trying to open cans with that. And I had 
so many people at my house and there was, it was just a mess and opening it with this crank can opener that just was taking forever. And I don't remember what I was making at chili or something. And I had like eight cans I was trying to open. It took so long with that stupid can opener. My hand was sore. I had like almost a, a blister or like a callus or something starting on my hand from that stupid can opener. And goodness, just get go get a good one that's going to not cause injury when you use it. And I mean, my kids use the can openers often. They get the different pineapples and things like that that we have in the cans. But I don't open cans all that often. And I didn't realize our can opener, we had the KitchenAid can opener that broke. It has a lifetime warranty. I got to send that back or whatever you have to do to get that fixed. <laughs> I was using this broken can opener. Y'all, don't do that to yourself. It's not worth it. Go spend the money. Spend the time to get the replacement one, whatever it is, and get the junky ones out of there so you don't have it to mess with. Like, it's not there. <laughs> I'm not, I don't want to do that ever again. And then I had this spoon that just, like the spatula scraper, it just was always crooked on the thing, and it never swiped the side of the bowl clean. It just, like, left a it left a crooked line every time and it didn't get it cleaned off. It was so frustrating. Like, just get rid of it. I had four other ones I could use. There's no need to have a bunch of stuff that doesn't work for you. So make, make sure when you're, you're opening your drawer, like next time you open your drawer, grab a grocery bag before you go in the kitchen to make dinner. And as you're making dinner and you're waiting for that water to boil or whatever you're doing, you know, the oven to preheat, and you're, you're done with your prep stuff, as soon as it goes in the pot or as soon as it goes in the oven, give it a quick stir or whatever, and then clean out a drawer. When you open that drawer to stir the sauce or whatever you're doing, see if there's something you can get rid of. Is there something in there that you have too many of? Like, do you really need eight bamboo spoons or spatula thingies, whatever they're called, the flat ones? I had six of them. I only use two. That's all I use. The other ones are brand new. I've never used them ever. <laughs> so I gave my mom one. I gave, I donated a couple of them, but just find some things that you can get rid of so that your drawer stays easy to use. So you can find the things that you actually do use without that other stuff being in the way, blocking you from the things that you want to get to. I know my husband half the time when I, he's cooking in the kitchen which is infrequent because he works a lot. <laughs> but when he's cooking the kitchen, he's like half the time he's spending there, he's asking me what to do or where something is or um, where, you know, these things are. And they're in the same place they've been the whole time we've lived in this house. But it just, <laughs> and the kids put stuff away. Something gets put on top of it. The, you know, the waffle maker is on top of the, um, the skillet so he couldn't find the skillet because it was under the waffle maker and you know just different things like that that just cause problems how often have we used the waffle maker like five times like five times <laughs> do we need to keep it mm. if it's me the answer is no I like pancakes and french toast better but <laughs> the kids like waffles sometimes but anyways just think through are you using it can you do without it can you use the space better for something else? Is there somewhere else that it can go if you don't use it very often so that the stuff you do use often can take up that better, you know, be in that more um, convenient spot. But anyways, I hope that this has been helpful for you guys. I have really enjoyed talking about this and I hope that you all will send me some more questions and let me know what other areas or what other questions you have for your house or your styling. And I look forward to helping you and working with you. And I appreciate you guys so much. I will be praying for you that you have a wonderful week and that you are able to make a difference in your life and in your home right now, today. Amen. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Simplified and Fabulous Mom Life Podcast. We would love to hear from you. Our podcast hotline for U.S. is 980-389-0399. You can share your tips and tricks, topic suggestions, ask questions, and let me know if we should answer any of these on the air. For other ways to connect, you can reach us at jmorganizingspaces.com. Thanks,
for listening to this episode. Did I say it right?